Now we come towards the collision of bodies. The event or the process. When we use the term collision, it means that two bodies are coming towards each other. They collide. Now after colliding, either they stick together or they move away from each other. Or there can be other condition that when the two bodies collide, the whole system of two bodies start moving in one direction, either towards uh, right or the left. So now this can be depicted as follows, as it is mentioned, the collision of the bodies. The event or the process in which two bodies either coming in contact with each other or due to mutual interaction at distance apart affect each other's motion and that motion can be classified as velocity, momentum, energy or the direction of motion and this is defined as collision. So collision is nothing, it is basically two bodies comes in contact with some impact, momentum. Now in collision, uh, first of all, uh, we come towards a collision a particular time. The particles come closer before collision and after collision, they either stick together or move away from each other. This is what I have just now explained that during the collision, bodies either stick together or they move apart. Now in the second part or the B part we have mentioned, the particles need not come in contact with each other for a collision. From a certain separation, they can show the interaction. In the C part, what we have done, the law of conservation of linear momentum is necessarily conserved in collision, whereas the law of conservation of mechanical energy is not. Now we come towards the note, one of the very important note, if F is the average of time varying force during collision and delta T is the duration of collision, that is the time, then impulse is given as a short duration force that will be force multiplied by delta T, where delta T is a very small time and F is the force applied for very small time. So this is what the meaning of impulse or impulse can be further stated as uh, the change in momentum. Now we come towards very broadly the type of collisions. So there are various types of collision. Uh, first of all, uh, type of collision will be depending upon the basis of direction, uh, on the basis of conservation of kinetic energy. Conservation of kinetic energy means energy neither created nor destroyed. Now, on the basis of direction, uh, we can classify the collision as one dimensional collision or the two dimensional collision. Whereas on the basis of conservation of kinetic energy, uh, we will say it is elastic collision, inelastic collision, perfectly inelastic collision. So one dimensional collision can be taken as head on collision or a direct collision. The collision in which the particles move along the same straight line before and after the collision is defined as one dimensional collision. The collision in which the particles move in the same plane but at different angles before and after collision, then it is supposed to be oblique collision. A collision is said to be inelastic. Now here we are referring to inelastic collision. So inelastic collision means where there is loss in kinetic energy. So how can we say it? A collision is said to be inelastic if the total kinetic energy does not remain constant. Now the next definition is about the elastic collision. So elastic collision is one in which there is no loss of energy. Like for example, we consider a vacuum tube and in vacuum tube, um, there must be a very low pressure. There is one cathode plate and anode plate. Cathode plate is slightly heated and then those electrons are accelerated. They strike the gas atoms. We find that whatsoever is the energy of electron that will strike with the gas atom and some other electrons are ejected out. And the energy of those electrons will also remain the same as that of the earlier electron. And that is an example of the elastic collision. 
So a collision is said to be elastic if the total kinetic energy before and after collision remains the same. The collision in which particle gets collapsed together after the collision is called perfectly inelastic collision. In this type of collision, loss of energy is maximum. Now we come towards note that is regarding the linear momentum. So in all type of collision, we find the linear momentum is conserved. So it is mentioned here that linear momentum is essentially conserved in any type of collision. Now we will consider the Newton's law of collision and in the Newton's law of collision we have to go through with the definition of the, of the coefficient of restitution. So we take the relative velocity uh, after collision and we take the relative velocity before collision and the ratio of the two gives the value of minus e where E is supposed to be the coefficient of restitution. So relative velocity before collision and relative velocity after collision, this ratio we consider and E is supposed to be the coefficient of restitution. Now let us make assumption that U1 and U2 be the velocities of two bodies uh, before collision and V1 and V2 uh, are the velocities after the collision. So the coefficient of restitution can be given as the ratio of the two. So E is given by function V2 minus V1 over U2 minus U1 and a negative sign is indicating the direction. If E is 1 for elastic collision, E is less than 1 for inelastic collision and E is equal to 0 for a perfectly inelastic collision. 